We start tonight in Ukraine. The mayor of the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, says people are being evacuated from a high-rise block of flats after another wave of aerial attacks. Vitaly Klitschko said debris from a Russian rocket started a fire and that one person was injured. Sirens sounded and explosions were reported from around the city in the early hours of Tuesday. Officials said air defense systems were responding. Strikes have been reported for several days. On Monday, Russia mounted a series of daytime strikes on Kyiv. The city's military administration says all were shot down and no targets were hit. Residents were seen rushing to the nearest shelters as explosions were heard overhead. And this here is Sunday evening. Ukrainian officials say that 66 out of roughly 75 cruise missiles and drones were intercepted by their defenses in what was the 15th air attack on the capital this month. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landale is in Kyiv. Today's strikes were unusual for two reasons. One, because they came in the daylight, and secondly, because they appeared to be targeted here at the center of the city. Until now, most of the airstrikes came at night, and they were targeted at the outskirts, at national infrastructure and some of the air defenses itself. So the authorities said they managed to shoot down 11 ballistic and cruise missiles. Of course, that meant that there was a lot of debris, that came from the skies, landing on the ground, damaging some buildings. But miraculously, there were reports of just a few injuries. So what we're seeing is an uptick, uptick in tempo of this conflict. Russia is putting more pressure on the capital here in, in the Kyiv, but it's also striking military targets elsewhere. Ukraine admitted rarely that one of their military facilities in the west of the country had been targeted, an oil depot set on fire, some aircraft damage. At the same time, Ukraine is stepping up its attacks on Russian targets in Russian-held parts of Ukraine and is also accused by the Russian authorities of shelling Russia proper. So what we're seeing is military activity increasing on both sides ahead of what could be Ukraine's long-expected counteroffensive. Earlier, my colleague Azadeh Moshiri spoke to Yuri Sak, who is in Kyiv and is an advisor to Ukraine's Minister of Defense. Yuri, thank you so much for joining us on this program. Now, big explosions over the weekend in Kyiv. Uh, today as well hasn't been an easy one for you either, and especially uh, this weekend reports that these came daylight time. That's unusual. Can Ukraine keep Kyiv safe? Good evening, Azadeh, and thank you for having me. Today was indeed a... Uh another missile strike actually this was number 16 since the beginning of may this was a strike which was carried out by ballistic and cruise missiles and this was actually the second strike within the same 24 hours so um, the pattern is kind of changing and it's intensifying now for me personally this was a very difficult day because um, uh, during one of the air raid sirens as i was uh, heading towards the bomb shelter, I was uh, caught in the middle of this crowd of little kids. And uh, as we were running towards the bomb shelter, these kids were screaming and yelling and crying. And I have little children and uh, they're not in Kyiv. I just cannot imagine what their parents must have been going through knowing that their kids are at school and there are missiles flying over central Kyiv. And we all saw them. We heard them explode. We saw the air defense missiles being fired at them. You're describing something about, you know, these attacks intensifying, children uh, having fear in them, seeing all of this. But can Ukraine's army keep fending these attacks off there's of course this long-awaited counter-offensive when is that actually going to happen it's going to happen uh, hopefully soon but if you looked in the eyes of the little children in the ukrainian bomb shelters today and if you realize that every second kid in that bomb shelter has a father or a mother who are in the trenches in the east of ukraine getting ready for the offensive now these attacks you know russia the terrorist state is hoping that by these missile strikes they will break our will they will make us more agreeable more ready to negotiate in essence what they're making what they're achieving is they're making all of us more angry and more thirsty for victory so yes. the only reason why the counteroffensive or offensive has not started yet is because we've said it many times we are fighting a smart war that means we will not risk our troops if there is a slight you know the smallest risk 
So, which means our military and political commanders assessing the situation on a daily basis. And what we have to remember is that some parts, some shaping operations, which are already part of the offensive, have been already taking place for some time, for a couple of weeks now. Yes, but Yuri, so, you're talking about fighting a smart wall, but isn't there a risk that as you keep delaying the, the counteroffensive, that Russia will manage to deplete Ukraine's uh, defense systems? Well, our allies are, you know, supporting us strongly and there are supplies and deliveries on a daily basis. And the production of, for example, ammunition across Europe and in other countries who are supporting Ukraine has been ramped up recently. So, of course, this is the tactics that Russians are employing. These terrorists are trying to exhaust our air defenses. They're using cheap Iranian drones. Just two nights ago, they have launched 59 on the same night. I mean, we have shot down 58 of them, but well, you have to understand that we are shooting them down, not with uh, expensive missiles, not with Patriot missiles, right? So we are, we are building the three layered air defense system. That means that we are able to shoot down certain aerial object with smaller um, yes. anti-aircraft missiles and uh, guns. So it's it's very smart in that respect as well. Yes, and Yuri, you're talking about the need for Western support. Big event uh, over the weekend. President Erdogan has uh, gained another term in office in Turkey. How will that impact Ukraine? Turkey has been a very important player from the actually beginning of this large-scale invasion, in particular when it came to brokering the grain deal, which, as you know, is something that the world depends on, because if the grain deal is not working, if Ukraine is not able to export grains and corn and sunflower seeds to countries in Middle East and uh, Africa, uh, this could result in a global food crisis. So Turkey has been a very important player, and, uh, you know, Mr. Erdogan, has been active in terms of trying to facilitate certain important solutions. So we hope it stays that way. We, you know, Turkey is a member of NATO. Turkey is a member of the civilized uh, coalition of free nations, as we call it. So we hope that the outcome of the elections in Turkey uh, will, you know, will mean just continued support for Ukraine. Yuri Sak, advisor to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Thank you so much for joining and stay safe. Thank you so much, Azadeh. Thank you.